Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs, and today I have a card featuring some new products from Visible Image, so let's jump right in. So I am going to create my background, and I have a piece of Distress Watercolor cardstock here, and I'm going to emboss these really cool circles into it. Uh, these are the Visible Image Round in circles stamps and I have four of them stuck on some acrylic blocks here just because I didn't need them to be a perfect stamping so I didn't bring up my misty tool or anything like that I just wanted to add these into the background because I thought that they would look really neat behind Molly who is going to be our focal point so I stamp them kind of keeping them closer to the edges in some Versamark ink and then I'm going to coat it in some fine detail white embossing powder uh, this is is hard to see. I know <laughs> it's really difficult to see at this point, but once we kind of do the resist technique, once I bring in the colors for the background, it will be a lot easier to see these. Uh, it just, I really wanted that white on white kind of look. So I did bring in the white. You could also have used um, clear embossing powder instead of white embossing powder, and you would have gotten the same look here because my paper is white, but I just, I kind of, and I generally just go to white embossing powder for some reason. So I kind of end up going back to what I know. So I did heat set that and now I were going to move into coloring the background. So I did spray my cardstock down with some water. I just wanted some movement in my sprays. And I have two Distress spray stains in Speckled Egg and Rustic Wilderness. And then I'm going to have two Oxide inks as well. I'm going to have Mermaid Lagoon and I bring in Squeezed Lemonade at the end just to add a little bit extra color. Uh, I knew that I wanted to color Molly's dress in purple so I brought in the squeezed lemonade as a nice contrast to the purple because yellow is the natural um, color to go with purple like it's its complementary color so I really wanted to bring that in and then I did splatter a little bit of water on top to create a little bit more movement and a little bit of extra texture and now these colors do dry back a bit they won't be quite as vibrant as you see them here um, just that is the nature of those inks uh, but I still think the end the background ends up looking pretty stunning I really like how it turned out so <clears throat> I just brought in my heat tool to speed up the drying process because I was too lazy to wait I just I wanted to keep creating so I did speed it up you don't need to do that and then I did bring in a piece of clean paper towel and I'm just going to mop up the areas that are still wet on the cardstock and then I buffed the color off of any area that it was sitting on top of the embossing powder and that's kind of that embossing resist technique so then I brought in Molly this is uh, Molly rules she's Molly from that stamp set and I'm just going to stamp her out on some express it cardstock in memento tuxedo black ink because it is a copic safe ink and I wanted to color her with copic markers and we're going to jump straight into this this is sped up quite a bit uh, and I'm only going to show you one piece of the coloring with the certain color families that I used so for her skin there I'm going to use e E21 and E33 and then I do bring in R20 as the cheek color. Um, this is kind of my preferred skin tone blend. There are so many of them out there. Uh, I just I tend to go with my own skin tone and I'm quite pale so uh, this is just kind of where I end up but there are so many different blends out there that you could use. Uh, and I did always, I always work lightest, mid-tone, dark tone, and then back through. Um, so I always like to lay my a wash of my lightest color, and then I go through in mid-tone and dark tone, mid-tone to light tone again. So we're going to do it here in the hair, and it's going to look a little bit more obvious here, uh, because I left a larger area for uh, the white of the card stock to show through, like the highlight. So when I like to do uh, something quite dark, like a black, I generally don't use black because black is one tone and I find that you don't get much dimension from your coloring at that point. So when I want to do something dark, I usually bring in my cool grays. So in this instance, I'm using C5, C7, and C9, and I'm going to go through them. Uh, so you saw I brought in my lightest tone, then I go through with my C7, and now I have my C9, and I'm just darkening up the ends. Uh, and I did leave a fairly large highlight. I really like hair to have quite the shine to it, uh, so that's just a, a preference I have. Um, but you'll see here once we go back through the colors that it does look quite dark. It doesn't necessarily look gray. Um, it just This is just my preference to kind of create dark shades without bringing in a one-tone black marker because there aren't multiple shades of black in the Copics. So there's two and they don't 
they don't layer together. So I, I have a tendency towards uh, the cool grays generally. And then I brought in my purples. I have V12, V15, V17, and V09. Uh, and I'm only going to show you on the skirt and the tights, but the top of the dress, I do the exact same. Uh, I just I really wanted to create kind of an ombre look. So on the skirt, the darkest color is kind of where her waist is, and then it kind of poops poofs out into the lightest tone. So I did use four colors here. You don't need to. This is just, I have them. I like to use them. This image isn't super big. You wouldn't need to use like four color shades on something, but I own them. So why not? And there you can kind of see how that dress came together. I really wanted to create kind of like a an ombre of the, the four purples uh, in the dress. And I think it turned out pretty neat. And then I'm going to use, I used G... Uh, oh, three and G05 for her eyes. I just, I love a bright pop of green with purple. It's just a preference to me. You could have colored this, of course, any shades that you like. I just have a preference for purple and green. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, and then I did bring in C1 and C3, which are the cool grays again, but the lighter cool grays. And this is only to add a little bit of shadowing to the skulls in her hair clips and the bunny. Um, I wanted it to be mostly white. However, I, I wanted it to cast a shadow. Otherwise, it would be very flat looking to this image that now has a bunch of shading and a bunch of uh, layers to it. So I did add shadowing just to the right hand side of the images. And then, of course, because it's me and I have to add all the glittery things, I brought in my Spectrum Noir Clear Glitter Pen, and I just added glitter uh, across multiple areas. I put it on the little skull clips, I put it on the purple stripes in her tights, and then I do also add it, just kind of flicks of it out in the skirt piece here, like the kind of tutu-esque part of her dress. And I, this image was so much fun to color. I like characters. I think they're a lot of fun to play with. Um, I'll have to do some more cards with her because she's just stunning. But I had a lot of fun coloring these this image. And then I brought in my white gel pen and I went a little bit overboard. Sometimes I have a hard time knowing when I should stop with the white gel pen. So, I mean, you don't need to add this many highlights. And also there's no real rhyme or reason to where my highlights are. It was honestly just where I thought it would look good. That's pretty much the only criteria for me and my white jelly pen. It's just honestly where I like the look. That's kind of the only criteria, but and I honestly, I did go a little overboard. And then I fussy cut her out. So there is actually a matching die. I don't currently own it, but uh, if you don't like fussy cutting, there is matching die. So that's amazing. I love matching dies for images. So I just fussy cut her out. She's not difficult to cut. Uh, I chose to, it, when I fussy cut this, you're going to see that I don't cut between the two legs, but later I decided to because it hid too much of the background. So um, I didn't think it was a super difficult image to fussy cut around, uh, but again, personal preference. I don't mind fussy cutting, so I have no issues doing it. But if you dislike it, there is absolutely a matching die, so you can just pick that up and you would be able to cut this out really easily. And then I am going to put foam tape on the back of her too. I'm not going to show it to you, but I do end up uh, putting a whole bunch of foam tape on the back. So now I'm going to trim down my background. It's fully dry at this point, uh, and I decided that I really wanted to bring in a little bit more black to my card design. So I, I am going to layer it. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I love to layer everything. It just gives it that finished look that I love. So I am going to create a black layer and it just is this black shimmer cardstock. It's really subtle, but it's just adds a little bit of X something extra. So I thought that that was really pretty behind it there. And because I hate to waste a whole bunch of cardstock, I have this really cool die that cuts out all these really thin circles. Excuse me. Uh, so I am going to use that and cut it out of the center of that shimmery black cardstock. And then I'm going to add that onto my background. I love the very abstract circle background I have going on here. And I just really wanted to add some more circles to it. Uh, but sadly, I don't have a lot of circles in my stash. So this die really came in kind of really well for this design but you could of course use any circle dies you have in your stash nested circle dies would work for sure and then I just I uh, used my tweezers to add some liquid glue on there and I had kind of lined them up how I wanted them and pretty much all of them are 
either sitting on top of or underneath one of the other circles. I think that that just kind of looks neat and I do have two of them hanging off intentionally. I am going to trim them off later. This just kind of gives the illusion that there's more going on outside of the design and I really like that look. So I, I do tend to do that. I'd like to have elements hanging off of the card because that just kind of gives it another element to it, another dimension, another design. So I really like how that looks. You don't have to have them hang off if that's not your preferred look. I just kind of have a tendency towards it. And I also have a tendency towards doing the top left corner to the bottom right corner. Uh, that's just something I really enjoy. So I do kind of end up doing that fairly often. But any design that you like would work here. So I am going to start hearing, adhering my layers together. So I did adhere it down to that shimmery black layer and then I will tear it down to the card base as well and I'm just using my barely art glue you wouldn't need this fine of a tip for this I mean the circles yes not this part it's just that I had it out so anything would work that you like to use I just I have a tendency to lower liquid glue uh, simply because I like the chance to move my cardstock around so that's again just my personal preference and then I am going to snip off the circles that are hanging off here and you can I don't know I like that illusion like I, I just it always makes me think that there's more going on it just gives that kind of look like there's more movement and now I didn't have a piece of cardstock that would match the purples in my dress there and I really wanted my uh, card design to have a little more purple in it. So I brought the darkest color, it's the V09, and I just scribbled it down on a piece of cardstock, and then I'm going to white heat emboss the sentiment on top of it. And the sentiment comes from the Visible Image Lost for Words stamp set, and it just says, thank you for being you. And I think that this is just a great card design for that. I mean, you've got this beautiful girl with this super cute outfit rocking out and then this cool kind of abstract background. I don't know. I think it just really came together. I mean, I probably am slightly biased because I, I really enjoy the cards that I make, but I think that it came together really cute. And I think that it, this would be a really great um, a motivational card or just thank you for being you. Thank you for being an original. Thank you for being uh, the amazing person that you are. And I just thought that that sentiment fit really well. So I am going to white heat emboss it and then I trim it out from the cardstock there so that you can't tell that it was necessarily on white cardstock. Uh, it just looks like it's that purple, the darkest purple from my blend. And of course it isn't layered up so it's not as dark as it is on the dress but it is that color. So I thought that looked really pretty. And then to finish the sentiment off, I am going to mat it on the same black cardstock. I know. I just, I love layers. I don't know. I, I, I think that it just gives that more finished look, if that makes sense. Like it kind of, for me, it just, I don't know, it always elevates it a little bit. I just love layers. So I am going to adhere it down to that cardstock and then I'm going to trim it out so that it is got about the same border as my card does which was about about an eighth of an inch I mean I eyeballed it so it might not exactly be an eighth of an inch but that's kind of what I was aiming for and then I am going to adhere that flat to the card underneath where Molly is standing I do center it to the bottom um, and then I kind of adhere her off slightly to the left hand side I generally avoid centering things um, simply because I prefer not to. I just, I like the look of things that are slightly off center. That's just, again, my preference. You could absolutely have centered Molly and it would have looked just as good. This is just kind of my preference. And I did add the 3D foam tape to the back of Molly. So she stands up off of the card, her and her little rabbit. And then because I cannot ever call a card done without adding bling, I brought in some black gems just to kind of finish off that design and just add a little bit more black into the design. Now, if I had had dark purple gems in my stash, I might have used those instead, but I don't. So I might have to rectify that. But I did just bring in those black gems which I think tied it together and kind of just added a little extra shimmer and shine and I'm going to hold it up now so you can see this in all its glory look at how stunning she turned out and that glitter and the shine and the sparkle I just I think this card turned out really pretty I would love to know what you guys think of how this card turned out leave me a like leave me a comment and consider subscribing if you haven't already I do new videos every Monday and Thursday thank you so much guys and I cannot wait to see you again bye bye for now